today, if if a family doesn't have two pretty significant incomes, they are not buying a house, certainly not in the Portland metro region. So by that measure, Americans have gotten twice as poor or half as wealthy, however you want to measure it, uh, in 50 years. And, and people are feeling that. What is the problem is that they are being lied to about why that is, right? In many instances, I, Bernie was one of the first uh, presidential candidates, at, at least, that, that ever actually told them the truth about why they are poorer than they used to be. Uh, Trump was blaming it on the Muslims and blaming it on the Mexicans. And, uh, and, and so there was this backlash. And I think, I think it was a backlash against the status quo because the status quo is what got us here. The status quo is why people's lives are the way they are. And there were enough people out there that were just saying, I'm willing to blow up the system. I'm willing to, just as long as it's not a status quo politician. I firmly believe that had the Democratic Party nominated Bernie Sanders, that would be the president right now. Because I, I actually knew Republicans that were willing to vote for Bernie, but weren't willing to vote for Hillary, uh, who hated Trump nearly as badly as many of us do. I just That's want to about, jump in on that. Oh, go ahead, John. I'm sorry, I just say thank you for saying what you said. I appreciate that very much. And I want to ask you about that. You're a photographer. You've worked with, obviously, with professional media organizations. Where, <coughs> where, where do you find the responsibility of media in this? Because there's no accountability in mainstream media right now. They lie blatantly. All of them do. And now we have a confusion with Trump calling out fake news. But we know that not all of it is fake. So what would you do if elected to maybe put some, you know, integrity back into media? That's an outstanding question. And I've, I've actually thought a lot about that because I agree with you. I think, um, again, you go back 50 years and you look at what news organizations were like. Yes. And you, and you remember some of those, you know, Walter Cronkite and Murrow. You know, some of those old school journalists that, that actually told people the truth yeah. as near as they could find out, right? They did the journalistic work. And now you have newspapers dying on a daily basis. And the ones that aren't dying are the ones that are by and large sold out to some large corporate entity that then has their own message that they want to spin. So even if somebody does a decent journalistic article, you if you're if you are a journalist and you're used to looking at this stuff, you will see the places where something was tweaked slightly or, or left out or there was a line added or a phrase used to sort of cause people to take a slightly different message from, from the article that was presented rather than honest to God journalists. Uh, this will probably get me in all kinds of hot water, but uh, when I decided I was going to announce, uh, I knew that eventually somebody would do a, 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 an article on me. I wanted it to be as straightforward journalistic version as possible, as well researched as I could get so that people got a realistic picture of who I was. I'm, I don't want to sell some lie about who I am right. and have, you know, try and buy votes that way. I want them to know what they're getting. So I reached out to the place that I have been seeing the consistently the most um, hard hitting, well-researched, long form journalism, and that's Street Roots. Hmm. Uh, they, they have some some journalists there and and they um, have a ownership mechanism that does not spin that's right so you reached out to an organization that you felt was going to make sure they dug into your uh, who you are and told the truth regardless of what they found exactly because i i actually believe in journalism amazing I